Okay. Calling the October 19, 2021 meeting of the High Point Regional High School Board of Education to order. Please stand for a pledge of Open Public Meetings Act Statement. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advanced notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of the Act, the Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted at the Augusta, Branchville, and Sussex Post Offices, and notice sent to the New Jersey Herald, the Advertiser North and South, and the Clerk of the Boroughs of Branchville and Sussex, and the Townships of Frankfurt, Lafayette, and Wantage. Mission Statement. High Point Regional High School, in partnership with staff, family, and community, is dedicated to the quest for individual excellence. By fostering high standards of achievement, we prepare students to become responsible and productive members of a diverse society. Roll call, please. Mrs. Anderson? Here. Ms. Nugent? Here. Mrs. Schumann? Here. Mr. Carraza? Here. Ms. Smith? Here. Ms. Tadona? Mr. Klein? Here. Mr. Arnold? Here. Mr. Dunn? Here. Dr. Ripley is here via the virtual yeah. We did have a forum. Okay. A motion will now be made by the High Point Regional High School Board of Education to enter executive session to provide an update on negotiations, legal, and personnel items which are exempt from public participation pursuant to New Jersey Public Law 1975, Chapter 231, Open Public Meetings Act. Any discussion held by the board which need not remain confidential will be made public when appropriate. Minutes of the executive session will not be disclosed until the need for confidentiality no longer exists. The board will reconvene in public session, virtually and in person at the conclusion of the executive session. It is not anticipated that any action will be taken. And we expect to be return, uh, returning at 7 p.m. Um, may I have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Being none, we are now in executive Okay. I have a motion to return to public session, please. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, we'll proceed to unfinished business. We have none. Next, then, is approval of minutes. Yes, um, the minutes for the September 21st, 2021 board meeting, uh, the regular meeting, we, during the meeting, uh, we had a report from our principal, Mr. Talame, who updated the board about how the reopening of the school went. Mr. Talame praised the hard work that was put in to make it a success by all who helped. Uh, the board had voted and approved the new contract for the superintendent, um, several paraprofessional changes from part-time to full-time, increases to the district bus driver's hourly rates, extracurricular items, revisions to several board of ed policies, we completed first and second readings of several board of ed policies, approved the new student activity accounts manual, several transportation contracts, two out of district placements, and the standard monthly financials. Uh, for the executive session on the same day, the 21st, uh, the Board of Education um, discussed the legal personnel negotiations. The only item that has been completed is the superintendent's contract. All other items are still considered confidential and cannot be shared at this time. 
Okay, may I have uh, a motion to accept then the uh, regular minutes and executive session minutes of September 21st, 2021? Motion. Second. Roll call. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Tadona? Yes. Mr. Quine? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Is your done? Yes. Carry. Next, we have our first public comments session on agenda items only. In accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, we will open the public comments for agenda items only at this time. Each speaker should state his or her name and address. You will have three minutes to be to address the board, which will be timed by myself. We will limit this session to no longer than 45 minutes. Please be respectful and mindful that your comments are being recorded. And I believe, as in the past uh, few meetings, we have two methods for of a comments to be made. One in person at the podium here, uh, and the second is virtual via our online portal. So, if there's any. Anyone interested in uh, uh, bringing some public comments, feel free to come to the podium. Or anyone online? Doesn't appear we have any there. Nothing. No, no, okay. No comments. I'll remind anyone that may be watching uh, that we have a second public comment session section uh, later in our agenda. Um, so with that, I'll entertain a motion to close public comments. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. That brings us then to our presentations. Uh, first presentation we have is from uh, our student council, Ariana. Kojikaru, Speaker of the House, will update the board on the activities of the Student Council, and I hope I had your last name close. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, speaking to the mic? That's yes. it, yeah. All right. Um, hello. Hi. Um, my first meeting. Okay. Um, so far, the Student Council has run the concession stand at the um, football games for the past Three home games and one final game coming up on October 29th. Um, we uh, hosted a successful back to school spirit week, the September 20th to September 25th. And um, uh, we, the student council, along with the climate committee, co hosted a back to school outdoor fun day with ice cream, music, and games on September 29th, as well as the barbecue lunch hosted by Machinos. Um, and we are planning to host a spirit week the next following following week, leading up to Halloween and the final game we are going to be running the concession stand for. And we're planning to do classroom door and hallway fall decorations. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, Ariel. Ariel, I want I want to say from all of us because we, we were saying we want those kids back in our meeting. <laughs> It's so nice to have you here. It's intimidating to stand up here sometimes, but we can't wait to hear everything you have to say. So please, when you come back, know that we're really happy to have you here. We appreciate it. I'm excited to be back. Okay. And, and just keep in mind, we're just average people. <laughs> 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 yeah, you the supermarket. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have the HBEA, uh, HBEA next up on the agenda, but we do not have <coughs> Mrs. Is that correct? Correct. She notified um, the business office and the superintendent's office today that she would not be able to attend tonight. Very well. Then we get to proceed could, to the. Could you, and I'm, I'm sure you already did, we would like to hear from anybody, does it? And if Ms. Mancuso can't be here, that's okay. If anybody from HPEA would like to. Come and talk to us about what's going on in school for them. That would be welcome. I will reach out to her. Thanks. Uh, so then 
That brings us to the principal's report, athletics, and the public hearing on student safety data systems report. Mr. Tapp. Well, so, so, doubling as the uh, tech leader for our uh, play coming up this weekend. So she's actually going back there for because it's tech week. Um, oh, wow. Tech week is is a big deal. Tech week is late nights and, and long evenings, um, and they're usually here until about ten o'clock getting ready for the play. So she's um, behind the scenes, and as we know, we're not behind the scenes. The front scenes don't happen. So she's excited to go back and. Um, great, great job for her to, to explain. So I'll talk as fast as I can, as quick as I can. Granny has my notes, but so don't worry about getting those down because there's a lot to cover. Um, for the, the school events, a lot going on, right? We transitioned, as we talked about in this about six before, into this new year. Um, and we had a lot of planning that went into the new year, and we're excited about that. But as we know, this is like a year like no other year before. Um, and as we plan, and we plan, and we plan, we also then have to do what? Adjust, adjust, adjust. Um, so every day, um, we talk about things that we need to adjust. I think every every week we look at things we need to adjust, and we do that because again, it's a, a year like any other. Um, we're excited and happy to have a lot of the things of normal activities, for lack of a better term, back in the building. Um, we also our goal is to transition and support the students uh, coming in, and every time uh, we go through a week, we may see something new that maybe we have to plan a little bit different for, and that's something that we do on a regular basis. So flexibility and adjustment are the key phrases um, every single day. Family Barbecue Day, as Ariana said, was a success. Thank you to all the students, our climate team, our student council, our staff, Demacios, Ms. Balancek, for your assistance with that. Um, it was a beautiful fall day. We had to cancel it because of the, the rain originally. We postponed it, and it was, our Roker was, was right. It was a beautiful day. We're out in the fall, um, and it was just picture perfect type of fall day. So the, the students had a really great time. I really enjoyed that. They've actually, as I met with our student leaders post that, they requested about four or five or six of those um, a, a, a year. I said, well, let's work on a couple. Um, <laughs> and a couple of them thought we had the first one, and that was success, and, and they really enjoyed being outside. Um, as I said, for our fall drama is Clue. A little bit different this year. We're opening up on a Thursday night, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I mentioned that last month, but if you're interested, Mrs. Riccardi has shared um, those information and links out for tickets. Um, there is, we're having a live audience, uh, welcoming everybody into the auditorium. Um, or there's also a, a virtual um, option as well. So if you have any questions about that, you can ask me, I'll check or ask me, and we'll get you hooked up with that, but it's exciting. Um, the students are just through the roof, excited for to have an audience back in play. It's not just their parents. Last year in the spring musical, which was a late spring musical um, in, the, in the May time period, almost into June, and it was parents only because of the restrictions that, that were in place. This year it's gonna be a capacity for a full audience for them, so they're very excited about that. The reason why it's a Thursday night, not a Friday night opening, is because it's also a big marching band um, competition that, that happens as in um, band competition happens this weekend as well. So there's a lot of duplicity with students. Um, so that's why it's on Thursday night starting on that time period. Um, Ariana also didn't give herself enough credit because one of the big groups that have been really boxing all year long is our SAVE group. You've heard me speak about them many different uh, many different times. So SAVE is Students Against Violence Everywhere. Um, they're led by Mrs. Lembo who is just knocking out of the park. It's our, it's our biggest group. There's 30 or 40 active students already in that group. They built off a lot last year. They have students um, that we spoke about before, Joel Morales, who's on the National State Board um, as a member of the National State Advisory Board, which is a pretty big deal. Um, he's actually one of the social media and, um, areas and directors. Ariana is also part of our state group as well, so they're doing great things. Uh, we can respect, you may have seen him if he pulled up again this evening, um, start with hello. On the windows in the front, so that was our start with Hello Week, which they sponsored. Then enrolled into the Week of Respect um, activities for that. They're coinciding some um, activities this week for um, Violence Awareness Week, which is again a state recognized week. So um, they're just unbelievable how much they do on a regular basis. They also assisted us with um, recognizing Hispanic Heritage Month, which runs ran through October 15th. Um, so they are covering a broad, diverse area, um, and it's all student led, which is just unbelievable to watch. Um, according because that's what you want, right? That, that's the organic growth that you want. You see that happening, and the students are just excited to be part of something, and they're, and they're driving the train. So, really happy and proud of them. But again, Ariana's part of that as well. Um, also, another group that's uh, very active and, and doing a lot of things, especially early on as we talk about these events, um, is our Pride students, Peers Rejoicing in a Drug Free Environment. Again, that's also led by Mrs. Lembo. And next week, they're going to be starting with the call Red, Red Ribbon Week. You may have seen that advertised before. Um, it's what do you stand for, right? What do you stand for? What's your outlet besides drugs and alcohol? And what do you stand for and what do you do? So they're leading activities all week for that as well. And again, the goal is to celebrate a drug-free 
alcohol-free environment, and we're very proud of them and what they do every single every single day. Um, a couple things to talk about athletically as well, but we've had play paint, senior nights, homecoming. Um, we have a kick for a cure game coming up next week um, as well. So it's like you close your eyes and it's like pretty real. It's like pretty normal. It's like really exciting. Um, so we see the students, we see the parents for senior nights. Um, weather hasn't always been our friend. Some of those things we've had to change that. Play paint for field hockey last week. Awesome event. Um, they had an awesome game. They beat Kid Attendee six nothing. Um, beautiful event. I think they raised overall about forty five hundred dollars total for the for the Susan Coleman Foundation. So just awesome to see students again engaged, a part of something. Um, smiles when they're outside when you can actually see their faces. Um, not the smiling eyes. I'm just really happy to be to see that. And again, you close your eyes and it looks like a, you know a normal fall, which is a pretty exciting thing. Um, and last but not least, for school events, congratulations to Miss Sammy Perez. This got this got announced uh, the, uh, this week and actually yesterday. Who auditioned and selected to all state choir, uh, but even more press, press, impressive, Mr. Cardi reports that Sammy ranked second in the state for Alto Two. That's like really, 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 really good. Um, <laughs> all state choir is the top honors choir in the city of New Jersey. So um, students are just all over the place, whether it be athletically, um, in theater, in choir, in band, um, in prize, whatever it may be, just really shining. Um, and we also got known proud every single day. But we also be very proud of what they do. Um, every single day, and there's, there's a lot of adversity they're dealing with, right? They're coming back from a, a pandemic that nobody even knew what to expect and, and what to expect coming back, and they're dealing with that adversity, uh, moving through it as, as well. So, we're very, very proud of, of that and very proud of Sammy and her accomplishments. She may be, you know, on one of those famous shows at one point down the road. And then, they should throw it to that third report, which is done. That's okay, sure. Um, again, play pink field like October 14th. We also had a dunk tank. Which was fun out front. We did a little dual way to dunk tank in front. We had the high point barbecue family day out back. Crazy campus going on, a little bit nuts if you looked at it from an overview from a drone, it probably looked a little crazy. Um, but it was fun. Mr. Walton was the was the key uh, keynote speaker um, in a dunk tank. I don't think he was able to get out, even though his time slot was up. Um, as soon as he kept on putting dollars up to, to throw, which was a pretty fun thing. Mr. Campbell got in as well. I got edged out. My day was the next day, we got rained out. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, a, a mysterious pipe burst when it was Mr. Tom Waste. Pipe burst, been a half day schedule. So I don't know how that happened, but everybody's like, which time was going? I'm like, I'm on schedule today. Here's the, I proved it. Here's the, and then the pipe burst, and it was bad news from there. Um, so we couldn't do that, but it, I raised a lot of money again for that um, fundraiser for the Pipe Bank overall. And it went to Susan Coleman Foundation, which is great. Girls Soccer is Kicker Cure, which is next week, Thursday, uh, the 28th. Uh, they're also going to do um, their senior night then, and the money goes to the Red Cross. Um, so again, a dual dual night, pretty cool event. It's going to be on the football field. So if you're looking for something, uh, that's a six o'clock game. Six o'clock game on Thursday. So if you're looking for something, please stop by and have some fun and watch a, a beautiful game. Uh, NJSA State Singles Tournament. Page people qualify for that. Mr. Dexter, who also is our, our current tennis coach, uh, took it out there. She did a great job, um, a successful job in the State Singles Tournament, which is a pretty good deal. Again. Um, I guess some pretty um, tough competition. Some quick updates for the fall sports records. We know records mean nothing. It's about being part of a team. Um, it's great to have championships. It's great to hang banners. Don't get me wrong. I like hanging banners. I like hanging championships. I like trophies. Um, but it's really about being part of something. Football is two and five. Uh, girls tennis is three and six. Boys soccer eight and five. Girls soccer six five and one. Had a tough uh, tie against Newton the other day. Field hockey six and eight. Really had a nice stretch here at the end. Volleyball one and thirteen. But again, growing. Cross country, boys 9 and 2, and girls 11, 11 and 0. Again, successful cross country season and, and, and Jack League champs for the girls cross, cross country. So, um, kudos to Coach Sons and Coach Carter. The team is just, uh, you know, unbelievable. They're like machines when they got actually went out today. I don't have a final um, for today's event. Maybe some of you do, um, but I didn't hear any final on that yet. Athletes of the Week, September 2024, to page people for tennis, Troy Tiger for cross country. September 27th through October 1st, Lee English for girls soccer. Uh, Caitlin Roman for equestrian, and you're probably saying equestrian, we don't have that sport, John. Um, yeah, we don't, but we're trying to recognize students that are involved in a lot of activities. And Caitlin Roman um, is at a national level in the equestrian field, and she goes and travels around the, on the junior circuit. Um, and we want to also celebrate those things as well. So if we had a question, she'd be obviously earning some varsity letters and, and being uh, very well received there. So on so fourth, eighth is Christina Kozlowski for tennis, and Tanner Hokuson for boys soccer. And that is a summation of. That's our report. Any questions on two of those before I go into our SSDS? Hopefully that's up. Oh, all right, perfect. I right, haven't got a quick Mr. Kellen. Kellen, he's a technology guy. Hopefully, yeah. I'm not sure that works. I'm going to test this out. 
Look at that, it works good. Okay, <laughs> can I go back? All right, so SSDS, is it okay if I stand away from the mic? Yeah. 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 Can you see if I stand here? Um, student safety data system, this used to be. As an annual report every year, and all of our textbooks into this report in October is our time period when we're required to report that throughout the year, especially as it hits, which is something that we report on. Okay, so, this is what gets reported violence, vandalism, weapons, so broad, right? That's broad each, within each one of those things. Is other categories, but that's the spectrum of really what we're talking about. And that's what required to be reported. Um, and this is something that, again, as this is um, and something that, that sometimes that full transparency data. I'm not saying anybody else didn't, um, but sometimes the EVRS can be something that some people look at and say, okay, what is that? Now it's SSDS. If you look at that, so okay, what does that mean? What does that mean if you have that many incidents? Okay. But it's just because it's going to be conflict. Because there's going to be things that are, that are going to occur. So this is a story. You can see, okay, I'll play those. Um, so you can see our historical data going back to 16, 17, up to 2020, 21. Obviously, last year was a different year. Right? Last year was a different year because of we started in place, right? We had a different schedule. We had to go virtual a couple of times. And then fourth market period, we had a struggle with more students in the building. So you can see, comparatively, we were in an area that was pretty consistent um, for numbers for violence, um, substance abuse, and hit. Right, pretty consistent for those years across. If we look at that data, um, that, that's pretty consistent overall. Regardless of enrollment, which again was pretty consistent across those years, numbers didn't fluctuate that much, except for really with violence, substance abuse. Um, and that's on the end, substance abuse again is a broad category. Um, of possession and use and distribution and alcohol and, and all those things that are part of that um, as well. So you do see that we had some of those incidents last year. Uh, we did have some substance issues last year that were reportable incidents. Um, doesn't mean that those issues go away, right? People still struggle with things, um, students still struggle with things. And our job in those incidents is to try to handle them as best that we can by law. Sometimes obviously the state police are doing all of that, but most importantly, what's the follow up? Right? Where does the student go from here when they make those mistakes? Because we all make mistakes, we all fall down. So how does the student make mistakes and then something like that, which is a pretty big one, in school, on school grounds, how do they then move forward from that? So our support system is involved for the student assistance counselor. Um, other outside counselors are involved with that as well. Right? It's okay now how we transition back in. So when those students are involved with that, whether it be six, 26, or three, we meet with every one of them on the beginning situation and then on, on the other side as well when they come back in. Um, that's an important, that's a parent and student meeting, that's counselor, that's myself, uh, that's a sister principal, and we meet about, okay, now we transition and move forward um, from this instance, because that, that part of the support is really, really important. The biggest thing is hoping for not to repeat to happen, right, especially for something like something like that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, so just when we're looking at these numbers, um, is that the end of the 2016-17 school year and the end, or is it like always the same time frame? So right now it's one for violence. Yeah. But that's um, it's end, of, end of year, end of school year. Okay. Yep. Um, and then my other question is um, the enrollment, right? So that's how many incidents. So yep. percentage wise, there may be comparable, right? Because of enrollment. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So great question, Mr. Smith. So uh, question up is that's end of year data, right? So that's cumulative for the whole year. The report comes in October, as required every year. That's each year. So this year we have. You know, 818 students, right? Are currently in the building right now, and that can fluctuate every day a little bit. Um, last year was about 825, 827, that fluctuated a little bit as, as well. So, um, yeah, percentage wise, that could change. And if you look historically back, you know, you get up to um, close to a thousand, just under a thousand as those years went back first. But again, percentage wise, you're, you're probably the same ballpark. Okay. That, but John, just a question. You haven't listed the category of violence. I mean, we're talking about the standard hallway, right? Kind of situation. Fights, assaults. Yeah, fights, assaults, that type of situation. Yeah. That. They even clarify, I'm a surprise, into simple assaults, um, those types of categories. That's most, most of the incidents that you see, if you look at those peak years, most of those incidents are going to be involved with the standard fight. Yeah. Standard fight, yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay, anybody else on, on that? All right, so you can see, again, this is 2020 21 um, for how it breaks down. Remember, I told you about how substance abuse is a little bit more grainy as you drill down on it, right? So. Confirmed use, possession, and distribution, those are the really three main categories. 
all those situations involve the state police um, in terms of the situations that are, are part of it. The use is a little bit different, more of identification and notice. The possession and distribution, obviously, pull the ball game transaction. However, we also realized that the state um, changed their guidelines last year. So that was tricky, to say the least, because we were going through it the first time, state police were going through it the first time. So what they have to do, what they're required to do, what they're allowed to do, even though it's on school grounds, is a little bit different in terms of that part of it, in terms of possession um, you know, for marijuana and those sorts of things. Okay? And then the violence, as you can see again, Mr. Crowder's question, right, it's broken down in terms of, of that. Weapons are broad again, you know, in terms of aspect of it. Sexual contact is, is broad. Threats has to be a direct threat um, in terms of the actual victim. Here's the threat directly. A lot of times you're like, okay, somebody posted a threat online about somebody else. Well, that was to set that person directly. Um, and then there's categories within that and the fights and assaults. Um, in terms of that. But again, our post numbers would end up in that more than nothing for vandalism as well. Him, as you see in the monthly report, right, harassment, intimidation, and bullying, again, part of a, a guideline that we've been doing for a long period of time. The state put it in place about 12, 12 13 years ago. Um, and it is a, it's a, good, it's a good policy, it's a good process, right? Um, it makes it more thorough overall. Uh, we had to tweak some things as, as we go and make it more efficient on, on our end. Uh, but you can see that there was number seven that were investigated. When it's brought to our attention, whether it be a cyberbullying situation or whether it be a situation of rep contact face to face, right? We then uh, work with, with Mr. Rice, who's our uh, man bullying specialist. We investigate that. We determine based on the criteria of harassment if it meets the need of threshold. Right? The threshold for harassment is, is a little bit higher than obviously usually you put a comment and so forth and so on. Um, so as you can see from this, we had seven that were investigated. Four that we found is code of conduct. What does that mean? It means it's a conduct. It's, it's an issue. Mr. Campbell and I have an issue, right? Um, he reports it as a hit. We look into it, investigate it. We interview everybody confidentially, right? We communicate with the parents. We determine at the end of the day that it wasn't a harassment, okay? It was, a, it was a conflict that we had, right? It's a code of conduct. Unfounded means really nothing there, right? There's nothing there on the code of conduct side or on the harassment side for it to be notified as, as a case. Um, and then the number of confirmed incidents, which is what you see in your monthly report, right, each month, that would be zero from, again, from 2021. This, we couldn't say any bigger or brighter if we wanted to. Um, this, yes, it's a word wrap, right? Last year, we knew that the need was more than ever as it came out of virtual into a hybrid schedule, out of a hybrid schedule. Some students, when it came in September, <clears throat> haven't been in the building at all, right, for 18 months. Students at graduation hadn't been in the building at all, right, last year for graduation. First time they set foot back in school grounds with graduation. There's a lot of anxiousness that goes along with that, right? A lot of frustration. So, how do we continue that process? Remember, I talked about some issues a little bit, um, and it's also the same philosophy, right? You got to be there at the beginning, you got to go through the process, you got to be at the end for them. Um, so, there's support all along the way. And there's many ways that we do that with our counseling staff um, and working through this you know, global situation. These are just some of the examples. Um, relationships, whether you're a classroom teacher, you're a coach, you're an advisor, you're an administrator. If you can't build a relationship with the students, it's going to be hard for them to be able to rely on you for support. Um, so that's a really important thing, something to work on strength and trust every single day so they can come to you when they have an issue going on. I was going to the, the ninth grade classes uh, for the last couple weeks now, going to the senior classes and talking to classes individually through English and history classes. These are all things we talk about. Yeah, we don't talk about um, high academic awards. We don't talk about all the things that, that are, are real. Right? We talk about building that trust, building that strength. Of relationships with each other and, and also the fact that we all struggle right and we all read and adults in the room too we all struggle right? it's okay to not be okay in some situations and find the support that you need um we heard Aaron talk about the school climate team um and also the student council passed along another organization again of service learning but being involved with something um rtr response intervention in our our program parental engagement all along the way in the beginning throughout the journey and at the end um, and the parents are struggling with things, right, in terms of the aspect of it as well. So try to find them resources. In an area where, in our county, there's not a lot of resources. And there are, um, I think Mr. Campbell talked about this a couple months ago too, they're, they're so backed up, right, in terms of getting into a, a county agency or, or an area for support. Class of visit presentations, what I just talked about, going into the, the uh, history classes for freshmen, going into English classes for seniors, having that discussion with 20, 25, or 15 students one-on-one, -on -one, right, and having conversations with them. If they don't ask me any questions, and just get a chance to talk, have a conversation. Respect the violence awareness week, we just talked about that. Save pride and then mass and match pride, which we always love. Just the whole kids, Fridays, we really did that. Don't know that? No, no. 
you got to call masks and that's why. So we encourage relationships with each other as well, um, and with, with students, but also with, with each other as, as well. That's important. And again, these are just some examples. Our counseling staff is fantastic. Um, they are seeing so many things, they're working through so many things, especially in the last three or four weeks uh, with students because of needs, students get comfortable, needs arise, right? Students get comfortable, needs arise. And we see that every single year, more this year than, than ever, but the counseling and child study team, um, our, our, our counseling support center, student counseling support center in, in 120, always uh, working through those issues and trying to get the students resources as much as possible. Okay. <laughs> Anything, yes? Um. How are you finding it this year? Are you seeing more? I mean, because we are seeing a lot more. We yeah. Stuff going on. Speaking of us, obviously we have had a definite increase in spike on these issues. Um, not necessarily all SSDS SSDS mm -hmm. issues, but an increased number of, of discipline issues and, and student need issues mm -hmm. um, are, are rising quickly. Uh, and uh, that's a little bit different than years past. And those you obviously know right in the school system what it looks like. Um, you know, so that's something we're working through. And okay, how do you get ahead of that? You get to the proactive side, so we're not on the reactive side. Some things you have to be reactive to because it's the way it is, right? You can plan, plan, plan all you want, but you don't necessarily anticipate some of these things. But I'm trying to figure out, okay, what's the core of it? How to get to the other side of things? Work with, with uh, some ideas for an ninth grade class in particular because they're struggling in some areas with, you know, some of them really haven't been in the school since seventh grade. And now they're in a building of 815 students with a lot of responsibility, a lot of freedoms. They may or may not be able to handle that. So how do we work with those individual students and in, in groups a little bit more? But we are seeing that as well as well as an increase of um, need for mm -hmm. special last couple weeks. Yeah, they almost forgot to kind of behave like a student, even at elementary yeah. level. Well, yeah, our summer and eighth graders are more significant. Yeah. High but high school, it's like yeah. they forgot the rules, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and it's kind of a free for all. It's almost like kind of hurting cats. Yeah, sometimes. it's a big jump for them. No, you're right, it's a big, it's a big jump for them. So, like, you know, you know, ninth grade, you know, eighth grade, ninth grade, it's always a big jump. Now it's even a larger of a jump than that. Um, we're seeing it so with 10th graders, even on the 12th graders, you know, it's a big adjustment for some of them as well. They haven't been in a structured environment for, for a while. But making progress every single day, we have definitely seen, seen a change with that. Any other questions? I apologize for going fast, but I don't take up too much of your time. Good. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all. The next I'm presentation has curriculum instruction by Luke Curse Campbell. I think I have a shot tonight to be shorter than Mr. Talman. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Carrasco, but thanks, I'll take you over. To reiterate, uh, we had a tremendous day outside. Kids had a great time. Mr. Walton raised a ton of money. Um, this is what we want students. We want rigorous academic experiences, and we want them to go out and have fun and, and you know, be alive. Last Monday, we had seven presenters here. I believe three were virtual, four were in person. But I want to thank our supervisors, um, Ms. Courtney Delaney, Mr. Chris Dexter, Mr. Aldo Diodino, Mr. Brian Drellick for trying to gauge what their staff needs, going out, getting presenters and bringing them, them in here. I'd also like to thank Frankfurt Township School and Dr. Janine uh, Melly for the program that she ran and that several of our teachers um, attended. It's hard to determine what a staff is diverse and experienced and with different disciplines need. And I think we did uh, a nice job of presenting our staff with some, some valuable resources. Mr. Diodino and my administrative assistant, Ms. Jessica Briggs, oversaw the PSATs on Wednesday. It is no small feat. Uh, every corner of the campus, more than 400 students, multiple schedules, etc. cetera. Uh, it's, a, it's a large accomplishment. It's a significant assessment as it prepares students for the SAT. Um, this is the 10th year that the board has sponsored this assessment. It is costly. Um, it is highly regarded as far as relevant by the students and their parents and their teachers. So I thank the board for your support. And we believe that it's, it's a worthwhile experience. And the testing went great. But again, thank you to uh, the staff and to Mr. Diodino because it's a really tremendous amount of work to uh, orchestrate it. Uh, does everybody here know what a controlled burn is? Because I did not. Um, I did not. 
And Mr. Mr. Drellick contacted me and said, I want to go, basically, I want to go out in the woods and um, set a bunch of things on fire, um, which I thought undeniably the students will love. Um, but what exactly it is, and then I quickly realized this is something that forest fires or um, fire safety or firemen do. We are going to, the New Jersey Herald will be here tomorrow, as will Mr. Chris Franick, a High Point graduate who now works with the um, New Jersey Forest Fire Service. And out behind the practice football field or the upper soccer field, they are going to um, mark out an area of land. They're going to do soil samples and study uh, the ecology of that area. And then the local fire departments who we owe uh, great thanks to are going to come in with eight of their firemen and they're going to burn it the way that you would when you're trying to control or combat forest fires. We're going to have a trail cam there. Uh, about 130 students will regularly be involved through their environmental science class and studying this. And um, we're really excited. I want to thank Ms. Palisette, Mr. McGrath, uh, our maintenance staff, Mr. Drellick, and uh, this was really the brainchild of Ms. Kate uh, Namara. Uh, Ms. Namara studied this issue as an undergraduate and then did research on it as a graduate student. It was her idea, she presented it, and it was an honor for Mr. Drellick to support it to the extent that he can. So it's, um, it's exciting uh, because of the damp weather, the burn was moved from October to November, but I will keep you posted and you can come up and see it. I know the kids will, they'll enjoy it because it's authentic. They're going to be studying soil samples. They're going to have a controlled burn and they're gonna study the impact. And that's relevant, meaningful, hands-on learning that I'm sure they will remember for years to come. Speaking of science, they're really doing some incredible things. Seven years ago, the, the NGSS standards went into effect. Now, sometimes we hear about standards and there are so many standards that are constantly being revised. This was a hugely successful program to take high school science and say, all across science courses, students need to understand what scientists think, what scientists know, and what scientists do. Uh, science needs to become more exploratory, more hands-on, more problem-solving. And so we have four teachers who apply, four biology teachers who apply to the University of California at Davis. We are one of 25 high schools in America who are participating in a Sense Makers program. And that was uh, Dr. Zaremba's class this afternoon. The students are asking questions and solving problems far less stand and deliver content. We think about biology when we were in high school, perhaps we can recall memorizing the parts of the anatomy, which is still important, right? We always make the point that content, memorization and a base of knowledge is not unimportant. It simply needs to be shifted as less important to exploration. Those are three of our four teachers there. You see them there, um, Ms. Hennings, Ms. Sarno, Dr. Zaremba, and Mr. Weiss. Dr. Zaremba traveled to Chicago this summer for a week of professional development. And when I went up to take this picture today, they showed me their, um, their, their network of national high school biology teachers that they meet with twice a week. Um, and who has particular skills in certain areas. I think it's very important to note that these teachers are struggling. And by modeling the struggle to their students, they're having a profound impact on them. They're going into lessons where the answers, the questions that they're exploring either don't have a defined answer or they don't know the answer, and you're giving up a great deal of control. You're also working incredibly hard to redo a subject that you may have taught for 10 or 20 years. It's a lot of hard work. It's a new way of teaching. I think it will have an impact um, in our academic culture. And I want to thank them for their, um, for their willingness to try something new and to have students be far more hands-on um, than, than normal. Uh, I just love that picture. Um, it's uh, Ms. McCarthy's uh, psychology students who are uh, representing the cerebral power of the, the student body. And photos like that, can all be found on our, on, on our, our social media page. So 
very excited about science. Um, probably next month we'll have to tell you about, uh, I believe the trout eggs arrived this week. And so we're, is that accurate, right? So we're gonna be hatching uh, those eggs and growing trout. Um, and so students, you know, John Dewey a uh, hundred years ago, famously wrote the book, you know, Learning by Dewey. And uh, it still remains evident today that when you do, you remember, you understand. Um, and so we're happy that they're really rolling up their sleeves. Um, and thank you also to the board for your support to field trips. We had students go to Sandy Hook um, two weeks ago. We have students going to the aquarium in Camden. And so that field experience, that research, it's really great stuff. So thank you for your support. Questions? Great, thanks. Thank you. Okay. And that was only seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> that concludes our presentations. Uh, we have no other business, so we'll proceed to action items. First up is curriculum instruction and technology. This is good. Okay, so um, just to note um, action items for um, A1, 2, and 3 for the faculty attendance, student attendance, and suspension report. Um, and so I'm going to move items 4 through 7 together. Um, so um, 4 is uh, approving the um, HIV report. Five is approving curricular field trips and co-curricular field trips. Six is professional development activities. And seven is the district nursing services plan. Uh, so making a motion seeking a second. Motion. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? Okay, roll call. Okay. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Ms. Tadona? Yes. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Motion's carried. That's it for curriculum instruction. Now personnel. Ms. Nugent? I'd like to move items one and two together for dealing with student workers. Um, in the uh, cafeteria, the Roadkill Cafe, and in the school store. I think a motion speaking is second. Second. Discussion. Um, I'd like to, you know, I don't have to say this, but I want to change amend number one okay. to be in line with number two, dealing with the uh, minimum wage being the salary, the current minimum wage. If we change your school year and insert in one at the state minimum hourly rate and then take out at the hourly rate of $12, is that? Yes, okay. that's match number two. Because I do believe it's going up in January. So could we could you read what the uh, amended motion would how that would read? So we have it on record. It is recommended by the superintendent that the Board of Education approves the following student workers for the located locations listed effective October 4th, 2021 for the 2021-2022 school year at the state minimum hourly rate. Students will work no more than 15 hours per week. Okay, so we're so we're inserting the sentence at the state minimum hourly rate into item number one. Yes, and we do need to make sure we need another motion to accept that change. I would make a motion to uh, amend number one. Second. Any discussion on that amendment? Thank you. No. Yes. Good. Roll <laughs> please. Yeah. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Tadona? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Motion's carried. I make a motion for number three. It is recommended by the superintendent that the Board of Education accepts with regret the retirement notification of Elizabeth Hatler, teacher of English, effective January 1st. 2022. Making a motion seeking a second. Second. Discussion? Yes, I'd like to say something about Beth. Um, I've, I've known Beth a long, long time, and 
socially, personally. She's a wonderful person. She's fun. She's got a great dry sense of humor. Love hanging out with her. But more importantly, one year she had her uh, freshman English class in my classroom um, over on the, when it was the home ec room. And my office is in the back of that room. So I had to go back through her classroom when she was teaching to get to my office. And I would often sit back there and listen to her teach. And I'm telling you, those kids were so connected to her and, and she to them. And it was a pleasure. And I would, I would have to come out and say, this is a great class. I want to be sitting in the same. I want to be having this course with you. The kids loved her. She loved them. The, the subject matter was awesome. Um, and I just, it's one of those things where you, you know somebody personally, but until you watch them do their craft, it's like, holy mackerel. So she's really has done a fabulous job. She's a good coworker. She, she um, supports her fellow uh, English language arts teachers, but those kids have really benefited by having her in the classroom. So she's gonna be missed. Um, I would like to yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah, just briefly, I had Mrs. Hatler. I don't think I can bring myself to say that, but I had Mrs. Hatler uh, as a freshman. I TA'd for her my senior year. Um, she's one of the reasons that I went on to study the course of study that I did in college. Um, she's a fantastic educator and, and a really I came out of that class and my experience with her my senior year very much inspired to continue learning and, and, and doing and teaching the things that she taught me. So um, she very much deserves this retirement and I wish her luck, um, but it is a blow to this, uh, this school's program, so she will be missed. I would like to just say that uh, congratulations, Beth. You've had a fabulous career in which you have impacted the lives of thousands and the community is a better place for having had you be an educator here for more than 20 years congratulations and thank you for uh what you've poured out into this community good luck the discussion mr Peraza? yes mr klein yes mr donna yes Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Shimon? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Motion carried. And that's move number four. It is recommended by the superintendent that the Board of Education accepts with regret the retirement notification of Greer McGrath Sitz. I, did I just pronounce that right? Sites. Sites. Sorry. Secretary to the Athletic Director, Supervisor of Health, be effective December 1st, 2021. Making a motion, seeking a second. Motion. Second. Discussion? May I? You may. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty soon this is all going to be over because I'm going to be gone and everybody I knew is going to be gone. But in the meantime, Greer, Greer baby, she has been working this job. Or of, I don't even know how many different athletic directors she's had. And she's brought them all right up to speed immediately. She's super organized. She's been helping out with the nurse's office. She becomes closely aligned with her, the people she works with, closely aligned. You, she's got their back like nobody's business and she does a great job. But more importantly, she is so funny and she's so entertaining. She's got more trivia in her brain. She's a good, Jeopardy person. She knows all the old rock and roll stuff. I mean, she's just awesome. Always good for a big hello, always good for a laugh, always good for a story. If you're, I don't know what that end of the hallway is going to look like without you sitting there, but it's it, you have brought a lot of light and laughter to this place, a ton of it. So um, I've already been missing you, but now the rest of the school is going to be missing you. So good luck with this retirement. You're going to have a good time. Just want to say congratulations, Greer, on a long and productive career. One of the smartest people that I've known over my year, over my career. Uh, very bright, very intelligent, and uh, hard worker, and someone who has had an impact on High Point. We wish you nothing but the best. Congratulations. Any other discussion? 
The roll call vote, please. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Tadona? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Motion carried. And then that's number five, approval of substitutes for the school year, 2021-2022. Making a motion seeking a second. Second. Discussion? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Ms. Sedona? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Motion carries. There are no extracurricular, so Mrs. Nugent, you need to return. I'll see you up next. Busy these last couple of minutes. <laughs> um, I'd like to move number one, which is uh, we're going to second reading of the following policies dealing with federal awards, funds, internal control, and availability costs. And number two, dealing with revised policies and regulations on dress and grooming and dress code. Making a motion seeking a second. Second. Discussion? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Ms. Sedona? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Motions carry. Thank you, Mr. Nugent. Uh, next up is negotiations. We have no action items, uh, but I will mention that the uh, the board negotiations team is uh, continuing to proceed earnestly in productive negotiations with the HPE. Okay. Um, so then that brings us to buildings and grounds. Anderson. Um, we actually have an action item. It is recommended by the superintendent that the Board of Education approves the 2021 Health and Safety Evaluation Checklist. This checklist is part of the district's NJQ SAC requirements and evaluates the health and safety of the facilities for students and staff. And it's a lot of work. And between our business administrator and our supervisor of buildings and grants, you guys got, you guys knocked it out and it's great. And we appreciate the fact that it got done and we're gonna pass with flying colors again. So thank you. I guess I wasn't supposed yeah, to say that. Until right? so anybody else have yeah. Just so excited. Roll call. <laughs> Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Sedona? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Motion carried. All right, I will take finance and under finance, I'd like to move items one through five together. I one is a recommendation accept the board, the report of the board secretary, business administrator, and two uh, for the month of September 2021. And two is a recommendation to accept the report of the treasurer for the month of 20, uh, September 2021. And three is a recommendation to approve the report of transfers and minimum expense transfer report for the month of September 2021. Item four is a recommendation to approve Payment, the tax schedule voted bills dated October 19, 2021. That's today. Um, and item five is recommendation to accept the adult education agency account, athletic account, cafeteria account, principal petty's, principal's petty cash account, scholarship account, school store account, and student activities account for the month of September 2021. I make that motion seeking a second. Second. Any discussion on those items? Roll call. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Ms. Tadona? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. All motions here. Um, okay, I'll move six alone. The recommendation to accept a grant in the amount of $250 from 
California Casualties Music and Art Grant Program. Ms. Erin Myers applied for and was awarded this grant to be used for art supplies for her classes. Any motion seeking second? Second. See discussion? Uh, I just thank Mrs. My Ms. Myers for uh, applying for that grant for the use in her classes. Um, may have the roll call on that. Number six. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Ms. Sedona? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, move item seven, which is a recommendation to uh, approve and authorize the execution of the following tuition contract between High Point Regional High School as ascending and the following districts and related information as listed. Uh, making motion seeking second. Second. Any discussion on item six? Or sorry, seven. Seeing none. Roll. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Ms. Schumann? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Sedona? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Motion carried. I will move item eight uh, as a recommendation to gratefully accept the attached list of donations received for the Play for Pink field hockey game in uh, attachment G6. Making the motion seeking a second. Second. Any discussion? I believe this was the uh, um, the donations that Mr. Talamay earlier had mentioned in the neighborhood of 4,500. Is that right? Yes. Well done, Neil Yeah. Um, there's no more comments. Roll call. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Ms. Sedona? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Motion carried. We'll move items 9 through 11. 9 is a recommendation to approve uh, the reimbursement of Clooney Williams $55 per month towards cell phone use retroactively to July 1st, 2021. And 10 is a recommendation to approve the disposal a one large wooden coral music cabinet that is damaged beyond repair. And item 11 is a recommendation to approve the disposal recycling of IT department items that are obsolete or in disrepair as listed in attachment G7. I make that motion. You have a second? Second. Any discussion on 9 through 11? Take a roll call. Mr. Klein? Yes. Ms. Tadona? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Motion is carried. Uh, may I move item 12? There's a recommendation. Uh, to gratefully accept the attached list of donations received from sponsors of our cheerleading team, and that's an attachment G8. Making a motion. Second. Any discussion on this one? I don't happen to know the total on this one exactly, but I think this was uh, up there as well. Um, so thank you to our cheerleading team and our local sponsors there as well. Uh, may I have a roll call? Yes, sir. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Ms. Tadona? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Motion carries. And finally, I will move items 13 through 16. Uh, 16 is actually uh, contained in the addendum. 13 is a recommendation uh, to approve the architect's certified partial payment request from Aurora Environmental for $68,952. Uh, this payment will utilize capital outlay funds allocated for this project during the 2020-2021 school year budget. 14, the recommendation is the board approve the renewal agreement between High Point Regional 
uh, high school educational facility with school alliance insurance fund effectively July 1st, 2021 till July 1st, 2024. Membership covers workers comp, supplemental indemnity, uh, package pro uh, property boiler and machinery, general and auto liability, environmental li uh, impairment liability, access liability, and school leaders professional liability. Um, the resolution there. That's their language that I don't think I need to read. It's in front of all of you. And 15 is a recommendation to approve Wanich Excavating Company to perform work related to the winter maintenance snow removal during the 2021-2022 school year as per attached contracted amounts. Uh, contract includes a $3,000 minimum compensation charge if there is little or no snowfall this season. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Item 16 in the addendum is a recommendation to approve a non-affiliated basketball clinic run by Bill Percy and Jesse Strell on November 4th and November 5th, 2021 at a cost of $60 per student. I make the motion on those items. I have a second? Second. Any discussion on any of those? See not. Oh, call for Mr. Carraza? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Ms. Sedona? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. All motions there. Next, we have transportation, Mr. Carraza. I'd like to move items one through nine together. Item one is to approve and authorize the execution of a parental contract with the listed student for the current school year. Number two is to approve and authorize a, another parental contract with the listed student for the current school year. Number three is to approve and authorize the quota contract for athletic trips for the current school year as listed. Number four is to approve and authorize the joint transportation agreement for the listed student for the current school year. Number five is to approve and authorize a joint transportation agreement for the current school year as listed. Number six is to approve and authorize the joint transportation agreement for the current school year as listed. Number seven is to approve and authorize the joint transportation agreement for the current school year as listed. Number eight is to approve and authorize the joint transportation agreement for the current school year as listed. And number nine is to approve and authorize the last of the joint transportation agreements for the current school year as listed. Making a motion, do I seek a second? Second. I would just like to continue thanking June Williams for her tireless work um, in making sure that our students have buses to school, to and from, to activities, to sporting events. Uh, we've all heard the nightmare stories in the districts around the county about getting buses, getting kids to athletic events, school trips. Uh, June is working literally around the clock uh, to make sure that our students have transportation, not only to school itself, but to all the activities that they want to attend uh, while at school, class trips, field trips, sporting events, and she's working around the clock and working tirelessly. And, Unfortunately, it doesn't look like she's been able to slow down at all since July on this. So we continue to be grateful for her hard work and continued uh, ability to pull the rabbit out of the hat, so to speak, and make sure our kids are constantly on buses for everything that they need. So I just want to continue on behalf of the board to thank June for her tireless effort. I want to add to that too. I mean, I'm on that committee and, and while we're in the committee meeting discussing things, June, the phone is ringing and it's a contractor calling and it's 6 or 6.15 or 6.30 at night. So she's constantly working on it. We just really appreciate it. Yeah. And sometimes she drives the bus. Yeah. So yeah. Oh my when all else fails, she jumps behind the wheel and takes, takes the kids. So it's amazing. She's amazing. We're lucky to have the yeah. option like that. Her. Roll call, please. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. 
Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Tahona? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Mr. Graza? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. All motions carried. I don't believe we have any correspondence to mention under correspondence. Uh, under miscellaneous, our standing item about school board mandated training. Uh, this month, October, is typically the month of workshop where many of us uh, attend our annual or mandated training in person uh, or have, not in the last couple of years, but um, so if you are due for any of your annual training, um, see the board office. We'll set you up uh, for that. So that brings us to our second public comment section of the evening. Um, same rules apply as the former section. Please state your name and address. Uh, you can make comments in person at the podium. I believe I see anybody from the public present. So I'm going to turn to our virtual portal. If there's anyone online, you get to raise your hand, right? And we'll recognize you and you can make your comments. Seeing no one there. Going oh, once, going twice. <laughs> May I have a motion to uh, close the second public comment section? Motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, we are closed and second public comment section. Any non-committee board member reports or comments? Um, for mission statement, is this where I should bring this up? Mm -hmm. this Sounds good. Sense? Okay. So last month I had mentioned uh, that I was interested in updating our mission statement because it's been done, uh, it was completed quite some time ago, and could use a little um, updating, if you will. Um, since then, um, you know, we've had some discussions and, and kind of researched it, and really in order to do it, uh, the right way, where that involves all stakeholders and thorough discussion and discourse about uh, the mission of High Point. Um, it's going to take a lot, which is fine, and it's hard work, and we do want to do it, and it is uh, important work. However, with the COVID year and all the things that have been going on between contact tracing, and there's just everybody's plates are quite full and spinning in the air at the same time. Uh, so we're just going to kind of kick this can down the road a little bit um, to wait until things maybe settle down. Um, and here's hoping that maybe, uh, you know, next school year or, or whenever the case may be that we're uh, a little less burdened with uh, COVID related protocols and practices and give us a little more time that we can focus our energy on developing this the right way, whether it be through strategic planning or whatever it is. We're doing how we're getting there. Um, so just wanted to make mention of that. Thank you. Any other member comments or reports? Not. Uh, we have other business. I have one item, uh, but let me cover the one that's listed here first. And it's our uh, standing item that uh, lists uh, for purpose of public disclosure and in accordance with the Open Public Records Act, High Point Regional High School Board Office has received and responded to the following OPA requests over the past month and there is one item listed there uh, dated and five uh the other item so normally legal items are ones that we are um often advised by our attorney not to discuss in public but there are sometimes things that um at least i feel the need for public transparency is great enough that it's worth uh, bringing up in public and it being transparent. So last year, the High Point Regional Board of Ed was unfortunately on the receiving end of a lawsuit brought by the townships of Wantage and Lafayette, the boroughs of Branchville and Sussex, and a number of named individuals who were current or former elected representatives of some of those bodies at the time. Uh, the purported Reasoning for the lawsuit was to challenge the construction of High Point's budget for that year and, uh, and our usage of banked cap uh, as a means of addressing the drastic state aid cuts that we were, we were uh, faced with. And 
And um, High Point's contention was, and still is, that our activities were entirely within the bounds of the current state statute that governs those. And uh, the New Jersey Department of Education Office of Administrative Law found likewise. So you might ask, why, why bring this up now? Well, uh, just recently, we received a uh, bill from our insurance company. Our insurance company is who uh, legally provides representation for us uh, in this lawsuit. And the bill that we received is our deductible that the board is uh, obligated to pay towards those legal fees. And that deductible is $10,000. So the legal fees have exceeded $10,000. We're responsible for the first $10,000 and the rest is picked up by the insurance company. Um, that's $10,000 that is not going to pay a teacher's salary. That's not going to pay uh, for student activities or extracurricular activities or paying for heating oil or whatever. It's $10,000. It's taken out of the pockets of our community. So um, again, I think this is necessary to provide transparency to the public so that they understand um, that there are costs that are borne by them, um, unfortunately, um, that we were, we were required to do uh, as a board. Um, and I feel personally we were vindicated in that activity, but um, just wanted to mention that. I would just add, Mr. Dunn, that not only are we out $10,000 as a board, and that money can no longer be used for children at the school, but as I indicated previously when we discussed this, those municipalities all had to pay their legal expenses, and I would imagine in similar or maybe even greater amounts being the plaintiffs in the case. And, and again, it, it's just, I just wish all political bodies would realize that when you pull a stunt and, and engage in these frivolous activities that they cost the taxpayers even more money. Um, I understand the underlying lawsuit dealt with our budget. As we discussed in the past, they had opportunities to get presentations. Some did get presentations, and this was nothing more than a political stunt that's going to cost the taxpayers, not only of High Point Regional High School, but of all those individual municipalities that you mentioned, additional uh, funds that were just basically thrown down the, down the drain. I'm just very grateful that the governing body of my hometown, Frankfurt, did not join this one. It's not just our 10,000. Uh, I would imagine it's somewhere in, for those other towns. I believe the number was somewhere near 50,000 for those other towns and their fees. So uh, tremendous waste of money uh, on a frivolous action. And I just hope governing bodies would be more wise with what political stunts they choose to engage in. Thank you, Mr. Carrazzo. Okay. No other comments. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn for the evening. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Dr. Ridley. <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs>